whiteboard video of the semester for Chem 152. The last experiment is the determination of the value of the universal gas constant R, which you can see right here. Remember from the lectures uh, and even from the lab that for ideal gases, PV equals nRT. That means R is PV over NT. And I often get asked in class, well, where do these values come from, these constants? Well, they're determined experimentally. And the idea in this experiment is you take some magnesium, which, and this is all, this is the actual data from the video, so you should watch the video first. Uh, but we take some magnesium, we react it with hydrochloric acid. Magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid in this fashion. You get a two. You get magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And so what we do is from the mass of the magnesium, we can determine the moles of hydrogen. So there's N. We measure the pressure, volume, and temperature. Right? So in the video, what we did is you, we have the data from the video, and we demonstrated how it's done. And so this is the mass of the magnesium. The temperature of the water was 24 degrees Celsius. The pressure in the room was 31.01 inches of mercury. And the volume of hydrogen gas we collected was 38.2 milliliters. So I'm going to go through all of the calculations. So the first calculation is we need to get the moles of hydrogen. And it's broken up on the on the quiz or the data, but I'm just going to go through it like this. So we have uh, 0 0.0407 grams of magnesium. Using the molar mass, we know that there's one mole of magnesium for 24.305 grams of magnesium. And feel free to hit pause on this if you need to. And then from the balanced chemical equation, we know that there's one mole of hydrogen per mole of magnesium. So that means that we have 0 0.00167 moles of moles of hydrogen. And that's N. I'm going to summarize this over here. N is 0 0.00167 moles. Right? The next thing we have to do, we'll calculate the temperature. We'll just kind of go through the way the lab does it. So the temperature was 24.0 degrees C. Uh, to, we want it in Kelvin, so we add 273.15, and that will give us 297. 0.2 K, that's our temperature. So I'll write that here. T is 297.2 K. All right, the volume is very straightforward. The volume is 38.2 mils, which is, of course, if you do this, there's one liter. We want it in liters for 1,000 mils which is 0 0.0382 liters. So V is 0 0.08, um, let's hit the erase. Zero, 0.0382 liters. All right, now the pressure is tricky, so I'm going to uh, deal with the pressure in just a moment here. I'm going to erase this stuff here. So if you want to get a chance to write it down, you can hit pause. So hit pause if you want, otherwise it's gone. All right, so let's erase this so I have the space. All this stuff is in the lab manual, so you can go sample problems in there as well. Now the pressure is a little tricky because we collected it over water. And that means that there's actually there's a law called Dalton's partial a law of partial pressures, which I'll explain. But the pressure that we collected, first of all, we collect we measure the pressure. This is the pressure in the room, which is the we set it up. If you remember, raising the udiometer up and down, that's the pressure of the gas. And the pressure of the gas we had it measured in in inches because that's what our barometer does. There's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. That's an exact number, so it does not change your significant figures. So that means that there's 
seven millimeters of mercury. Now the problem is that the pressure of the gas, because this is collected over water, is the pressure of the hydrogen plus the pressure of the water. This is what's actually called Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. All it says is that all of the gases in the container exert pressure, and that means that the pressure that you measure is the sum of the pressures. And since there's water, there's always some in the gas phase, not very much. So that means that the pressure of hydrogen is going to be the pressure of the gas, which we have, minus the pressure of the water. Now to get the pressure of the water, there's a table in your lab manual on page 172. And from there, the pressure of water at 24 degrees is, um, where did I write it down, 22.4. So we just looked that up in a table that was determined experimentally. So that means that the pressure of hydrogen is the pressure of the gas, I'm sorry, we'll just put the actual numbers in there. The pressure of the gas is 787.7 from up here minus 22.4 so don't forget, anytime you collect things over water using this method, you have to subtract that out. And that means that there's 765.3 millimeters of mercury from the hydrogen. Now, because this had the value of R um, is supposed to be in liters in the atmospheres, we need it. So the pressure of the hydrogen in atmospheres we do the conversion, so there's 765.3 millimeters of mercury, and we know that there's one atmosphere for 760 millimeters of mercury. So that means the pressure of the hydrogen in atmospheres is 1.007 atmospheres. So the pressure is 1.007 atmospheres. That should be equals. All right, so just reviewing the pressure, we have the pressure in the room. We had to convert it to millimeters of mercury because our barometer reads it in inches. But because we collected it over water, we have to subtract out the pressure of the water. We want the pressure of the hydrogen, which is the pressure of the gas, minus the pressure of the water. To get the pressure of the water, we look it up at a table. The table's on page 172. And then we subtracted it, so the pressure of the room, which is all of the gas, minus the pressure of water, that's in millimeters. We want it in atmospheres. All right, you can hit pause because I'm going to erase this. Ready? Make sure you got it. We'll do the last calculations. Now we got everything we need, though. It's a little complicated, but not too bad. This is a nice lab to do. It's unfortunate you can't do it because this lab students really like it, and usually you get really good data. You saw what Amanda, this is the data Amanda and I did. That was the video we made before all this drama started. So now we can plug these numbers in. Remember, the actual value of R is supposed to be 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Now our value, is PV over NT, which is, let's see how close we got, 1.007 atmospheres, 0 0.0382 liters, that's a decimal point. Number of moles is 0 0.00167, making sure I'm writing these down right, moles. And the temperature is 297.2 Kelvin. So that means our experimental value of R is 0 0.0775 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. 
And then you're asked to calculate the percent error, which you've done a million times if you've done it once. Right? It's the, the observed value, 0 0.0775, minus the actual value, 0 0.08206, over the actual value. If you want to follow the sig figs, you have to watch this in the subtraction. So uh, it comes out to be negative 0 0.00. Four six over point zero eight two zero six times one hundred, which means we have negative five point six percent error. Which remember the negative means it's low. All right, so that is a run through of the calculations. These numbers here came from the stuff that we did in the video. The numbers in the lab that I'm giving you are different than those, but the approach to doing the math is exactly the same. This is the last video. It's unfortunate we didn't get to work together this semester, but did what we had to do, and I hope it worked for you. And uh, feel free when you're in 200 or whatever, pop by and say hello, and take good care of yourselves. If you have questions, you know how to reach me on Zoom, and best of luck to you.